Hello students, we're, today we're going to look at an academic article and this article is called The Relationship of the Severe Personality Disorders with Behavioral Activation and Inhibition Systems in Patients with Paranoid, Borderline, and Schizotypal Personality Disorders. Now this title gives us a lot of specific information that the whole article is about. And so if you were asked what is the topic of this academic article, you would basically list the title, you would have to write the whole title as the topic. Now looking for the name of the journal, we're used to finding the name of the journal at the top of this paper. Here we do have the name of the journal, but since every article is slightly different, although they all share the same basic structure, um, because this one is slightly different, we don't have that source information at the top here, though we do have the name of the journal here. But if we scroll down, we can find that source information here. So they have abbreviated the name of the journal here, but then they also listed the year, the volume number, which is 20. And here we have an issue number, which is three. Now you can always tell when it's an issue number because they'll put the issue number inside of parentheses after the volume number. So if you just see a number by itself, that's the volume number. But if you see another number after it in parentheses, that's the issue number. And then here we have the page numbers, 106 to 110. We can verify that by looking and seeing the first page is 106, the second page is 107, and so forth, going all the way down to page 110. That's the last page of the article. Okay, so that is where our source information is. It's listed here. Now, it's also listed at the top of the page in the next page. So here we have the name of the journal, the date, the volume number, and the issue number. In this case, they don't put the page numbers after, although usually you will find those after. Okay, going back up to the top, we see that we have two authors. The first author is going to be the lead author. So the one after the author's name, this one here, tells us where that first author works. That would be the author's credentials. Another word that we might use is qualifications. So you could say these are the author's qualifications or the author's credentials. This first author also gets an asterisk after its name, and that is because the first author, here's the asterisk, is the corresponding author. The corresponding author would be the person who you would get a hold of. You would contact this author if you have any questions about the research, about the journal, this would be the author to talk to because this author is the lead author. The second author has a two after their name. So to look at their qualifications or credentials, we look for the two and see where they work. Okay, so that's the two authors. We have our keywords listed here. These are gonna be some topics, some uh, smaller topics listed within our bigger topic of our article. And this is the history of the article here. We don't need to pay attention to these dates because generally speaking, you're only going to be asked the public publication date of the article, which we can find here. Okay, looking at the abstract, we see that what's really nice about this one is that the author has divided the abstract into pieces so that we can more easily find the information within the abstract. So if you were asked the question, 
what is the purpose of this article, you're likely going to find it at the beginning of the abstract somewhere in this section. So looking at this section here, first we have the sentence, given the disruptive effects of personality disorder on personal and family life, it is essential to recognize their predisposing factors to understand them more accurately and identify their preventive measures, treatment facilitators. Okay, now this particular sentence does not give us the purpose. This actually gives us the problem. What is the problem? Well, it's the effects of personality disorders on personal and family life. And the need, because of those effects, to recognize their factors and understand them so we can identify and prevent. Okay, next, therefore. Oh, okay, so therefore is because of this, therefore this. And this is going to be the aim of the study. We use the word aim, we can use the word purpose, we can use objective, we can use goal. So this explains why they're doing the study. The present study aimed to examine the relationship of severe personality disorders with behavioral activation and inhibition systems in patients with paranoid, borderline, and schizotypal personality disorders. So we will, well, generally speaking, when you have an academic article, generally speaking, you're going to find the aim of the study sometimes at the very beginning, but sometimes the second or third sentence. It's going to be at the beginning somewhere. But if they give the problem first, then it's going to be the next part. Okay, then we have methods. You can use methods um, to explain. You can use that word to explain what you did. Sometimes the author will use the word procedure or methodology. But in this section, this whole section here, several things will be talked about. They'll talk about the participants. In this case, they refer to the participants, these are the subjects of the study, as the recruited patients. Why? Because they recruited the patients. They went and found these patients themselves and asked these patients to be part of the study. So they were recruited. Um, they'll explain what they did, they, they broke these patients into three groups. We have the 30 paranoid patients, the 30 borderline patients, and the 20 schizotypal patients. So they'll explain how they put them into different groups, and they'll explain that they were selected by a psychiatrist, that they were given an examination, they were given an interview, they had to complete um, a special test, and so forth and that they, they analyzed the data, and here's what they used to add, analyze the data. So this whole thing here is explaining all of the steps that they did, and then here they explain their results. Now the results here are gonna be very general. It's going to be um, an overview of the results with very few details. The real details will be in the paper, and then we have the conclusion, which is also very general. It's a shortened conclusion. Um, and if you scroll down and look at the end of the paper, the very end here, they have a little bit longer conclusion that gives a bit more details. So that is our abstract. We've looked at all of the source information about this article, the details about the authors, and so forth, and we've looked at the abstract, and in the next video, we're going to look at the body of the paper.